What's up, Calc Gang? All right, so we got this really awful statics problem. There's a lot going on, but let's go ahead and solve it, right? We can just take it one step at a time. Let's do that. So what do we start to find first? Well, so it looks like we're trying to find a results in force, and we need to find, so let's go ahead and find the results in force, right? So let's find the magnitude of the result in force is what it's asking for in part A. So magnitude of result in force, right? We're going to have to add all these forces together in the x, add them all in the y, and then take the magnitude of that. So let's go ahead and break this down. Let's go ahead and break everything down into force into x's and y's, right? So let's start with force one. Uh, where can I write? How much space do I have? I have like this much space. Okay, force one, right? So let's break it down into x and y. So it's going to be 290, and then if we're breaking it down into just the x direction, well, it's going to be 12 over 13 is the ratio of this triangle of x to hypotenuse. So it's going to be 290 times 12 over 13 is the x direction. And then the y direction is going to be 290, but then it's going to be positive 5 for every 13, so it's going to be 5 over 13. So that's force 1. This is force 1x, force 1y. Nice. So let's do the same thing with force 2, force 3. Time is it? I have time. Okay, so force two. So force two is at a 45 degree angle. So x is going positive x, so it's going to be 330, and that's going to be cosine of 45, right? Cosine 45 is just going to give it along the x direction. And then this one, 330 sine of 45 because sine 45 is going to get in the y direction, but it's going negative in the y, right? So we have to put a negative out front here. There we go. So then force 3, we're going to have to do force 3. So it's going to be 280, and it's going negative, negative. So it's going to be negative 280. And then if we're trying to find the x direction, well, it's going to be 30 is this angle. So if we're trying to find opposite, which is x, it's going to be sine of 30. sine of 30 for the y direction. So there we go, we have our three in broken down into parts. So you can calculate those numbers if you want to, but you don't have to for this part. Right, so let's go ahead and plug it all in. So, trying to find the sum of the forces in each direction. So let's start with sum of the forces in the y direction. Uh, sum of the forces. So sum of the forces in the y direction. So we're just going to take all of these at one, right? So it's going to be 5 over 13, which is the first line, minus 330 sine of 45, and then minus 280 cosine of 30. Nice. And then if you add these all up, some of the forces in the y direction, it's just going to be equal to negative 364 pounds. Cool. So we did that, so let's do it for y, or for x, some of the forces in the x direction. So we're just going to take them all down the x, so it's going to be 290, 12 over 13, plus 330, cosine of 45, minus 280, sine of 30. And then, of course, some of the forces in the x, you just add these numbers up, and you're going to get a number 361. Uh, these are pounds, yeah. So there we go. So we have force, so we can say that our sum of the, or a magnitude. What's it called? The resultant force is equal to 361i minus 364j pounds. Nice. That's a vector. So if we want to find the magnitude of this, of course, we're just going to use uh, Pythagoras' theorem. So magnitude f resultant square root of uh, 361 squared plus negative 364 squared, and that's going to give you 513 pounds. There you go. So that's part A. Uh, we'll just put like an A right here. A. Cool. Nice. So now we need to find that angle. Uh, angle positive from the x direction, right? So what is the angle positive from the x direction? Well, we know it goes so much y and then so much x. So, of course, we can use tangent for this. So for B, we know that tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So in this case, if we're looking for the angle 
up from the positive x-axis, or our opposite is going to be the y that it goes. So it's going to be, it goes negative that, and then how much, and then adjacent is 3, 6, 1. So opposite is negative 3, 6, 4, and adjacent is 3, 6, 1. Uh, so then if you take this, you go inverse tangent of this whole thing, so negative 3, 6, 4 over 3, 6, 1, you're going to get that theta is equal to negative 45.3 degrees. There you go, that's for B. Cool. Okay, now we have the biggest long part of this question. I'm going to rewrite this over here somewhere. Is equal to negative 45.3 degrees. So I'm going to need a lot of space for this. Okay, for C, uh, get this back. Out of time. Yeah, out of time. Okay, for C, we're trying to find the uh, the moment of A, right? So we're going to have to find the moment of all these forces, right? So the moment, of course, of a, a normal thing. It would be force in the x direction times its distance in the y direction, right? And then you're going to add it to force in the y direction, a distance in the x direction. But what we need to do is we need to find the sum of these. We need to do this for each one of them and then add them together. So we can do that, right? Let's go ahead and do that. So let's just use inches and get started, right? So we're starting with force one. So force one, it goes 200. 90 times 12 over 13 in the x direction. So that's its force in the x direction, but then its distance uh, in the y direction is what we're going to need to multiply it by. So it goes four inches up in the y direction, so four. And then we need to think about, is this making it go clockwise or counterclockwise? So if it's going x direction, right, if it's pulling this way, it's actually going to make it go counterclockwise, which is going to be positive in this case. So because if it makes it go counterclockwise around A, it's going to be um, positive, and if it makes it go clockwise, it's going to be negative. So in this case, it's making it go counterclockwise, so we keep that positive. And then uh, the y direction is also making it go counterclockwise, so we're going to have that too. So this is 290, and then the y direction, like we said, 5 thirteenths this time. This is how much it goes in the y direction, so then we have to find its distance in the x direction, which is just 30 inches. Nice, so we did it for force 1, now we have to do force 2, force 3. So just with force 2, we're going to just add all of that. So then, so we can label this force 2, basically, by just putting it in a bracket. So, all right, let's do force 2. So force 2 is pulling uh, how much in the x direction, right? 330 cosine of 40 is what we said in the x direction. Or 45, excuse me. Pulls how much in the x direction. And then how much does it go up down in the y direction? So it's 12, right? So we can just put this 12. So uh, in the x direction, if it's pulling this way here, we can kind of just imagine it's going to make it go uh, counterclockwise. So there's a positive there. OK, so then let's think about the y direction. So the y direction is going to make it go counterclockwise, right? We're pulling here, it's going to make it, or I mean, it's going to make it go clockwise. If we pull down, it's going to go clockwise. So we're going to have to subtract this one. So then this is 330 sine of 45, which is that in the y direction. And then how much does it go across in the x? Well, that's just 30 inches again. So there we go. We did it for force 2. Now we need to do force 3. Uh, I'm going to go right around and write it on the bottom here. So then this is going to be force 3. So let's look at the x direction, right? So we know it's uh, 280 sine of 30. So if we're pulling this way the x direction, it's obviously going to make us go clockwise. So there's going to be a negative out here. And then we need to find how much it goes uh, in the y direction. So because we're taking the x, so we need to find distance in the y direction. So to here, it's going to be 3 inches plus 16 inches plus 12 inches. So that's 28 plus 3, so that's 31 inches. So then, let's look at the y direction. So if we're pulling this way in the y direction, it's going to make us go counterclockwise, right? Pulling down counterclockwise. So it's going to be a negative again. So then this is going to be minus 280 cosine of 30 like we found up there for the y direction, but then we need to find its distance in the x. So we know it goes 30 inches over, but then 10 inches back, so this is just 20 inches. Nice. 
Okay, so then if you do all of this, you get um, negative one thousand or negative eleven thousand one hundred pound inches, right? We have it in pound inches. We don't want it in pound inches. We it ends up in pound inches because we use inches for all of our distance. So if you want to convert it to pound feet, you're going to have to divide it by twelve uh, because you know there's twelve inches in a foot. So then you're going to get that that moment around a is equal to. Negative, negative 926 pound feet. Nice. So what the negative tells us is that it's going clockwise, right? The clockwise direction is negative. So there you go, that's how you solve this problem. Uh, pretty, uh, it's kind of a long problem, right? But you just have to make sure to break it into parts and then it's just as easy as any other problem. So yeah, thanks for watching and good luck on your statics homework, guys. Peace.